Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And yesterday I went on a drive in Harry and Harry broke down twice. Alright guys, uh, I'm sure most of you know Harry, this is my 1974 911 that I was backdated to a 1973 RSR type thing. I've heavily modified it in a whole bunch of ways including uh, electronic fuel injection and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I went for a drive for the first time in a long time yesterday with a bunch of other Porsche mates. And uh, it was a fantastic day, we went, headed out to about three and a half hours away from home. and. Uh, we stopped at a pub, had a great lunch, and after lunch, the bulk of the group went north to head home to Sydney, and two of us who live south, we headed the other direction, head south. And of course, two minutes after leaving the pub, Harry broke down, just cut out, pulled to a stop, and, uh, and nothing happened. And I thought I heard a pop and had smelled a bit of electrical smell, but then the car fired back up again, and I just thought, well, let's just go, and, uh, it, uh, once it fired back up, I drove for another 10 meters or so, and then shut down completely, popped, bang, smell, and I jumped out of the car, jumped under the car, could see lots of electrical smoke, had a look underneath, and the main cable from the alternator to the starter motor, which is a larger uh, heavy duty cable for this car because I have the big uh, classic retrofit alternator in the car to uh, power for the air conditioning that cable had come loose and had worn through on the drive shaft and shorted out the drive shaft and was welding itself to the drive shaft. I had to flick it off uh, from creating the connection and I managed to uh, get it out of the way. I'll show you that now, I'll show you underneath the car so you can have a look at that and uh, see the carnage. So now that I've unwrapped the uh, tape that I put on it when it broke down, you can actually see how mangled this cable is. So you can see here the it was drooping down and touching this tail shaft right here, and it actually just wore through the plastic sheathing on the outside, and that's what made it start to actually weld itself onto the drive shaft. So you can actually see the sort of build up here on the tail shaft where it was shorting out, and uh, did surprisingly. A small amount of damage for how bad it could have actually been so I think now it's time to pull it out and see if we can replace it and make sure that it never happens again all right so to fix this cable we need to get to the alternator which is obviously behind the fan here so uh, it's time to remove the fan and uh, and get into the back see if we can disconnect that cable and start uh, rectifying this issue So there we have it. That's uh, what was left of that cable. Uh, yeah, it was burnt through pretty badly. I said it was welding to the tail shaft. So uh, yeah, or the, the, the drive shaft. Not a good look, but uh, that means I'm gonna have to go and see if I can get some more cable about this size and remake it and see if we can get this thing running again. All right, so uh, we have my offending cable that's, uh, that left me stranded and uh, will actually uh, just worked enough for me to get home. Thankfully, I've managed to go and get some replacement cable, the same uh, grade, and I've got my really cool big crimping kit, so I'm gonna put some crimp some terminals on the ends. So let's go around, see if we can fix up this wiring and uh, get it looking a little bit tidier than what it currently does. So. Uh,
right, so we have the new cable in. It's all held up out of the way. Uh, I made it a little bit shorter so that it can't actually reach the, uh, the drive shaft anymore. So this end, hopefully, is all sorted. Everything inside the alternator, everything looks good. So it was good to check that out. Replace the cable, let's go to the front. All right, and that's the issue down the back. Now, on the way home, Harry actually broke down a second time. Uh, now, I've been having some issues with Harry over the last six months or so, driving around and the throttle had been dropping out completely, which was not a great thing and I uh, just kept putting it off because basically what would happen is, while I was driving, the throttle would cut out and because I had the Link ECU, it's got a protection in there with this electronic throttle. Obviously, the pedal is not directly connected to the throttle motor and when the signal goes out of normal of what the ECU sees the pedal doing to it compared to what the motor's doing. It just goes, nope, shuts it down, drops back to idle and you know, you're not gonna get a runaway throttle or anything like that. But what was happening is the throttle would just drop to zero. I'm just dropping to idle and I could cycle the key off and turn it back on again and the throttle would come back and uh, I could keep driving. That's still not a good issue because once it actually happened when I just passed a truck going uphill, the throttle died and I'm suddenly free, ro free rolling, trying to cycle the key on and off to get my throttle back on so that I don't get cleaned up by this truck that I just passed. Uh, yeah, not a good situation, but I believe I fixed that. It ended up, I think it was actually a bad ground to the ECU itself. So um, uh, when I sort of posted up to link some of the issues I was having on the uh, on their forum, and uh, they came straight back to me and said it's probably because it's happening to multiple things at the same time. It's more than likely a uh, a power or a ground or a splice, and I'm pretty sure it was just a dodgy ground. I've since fixed the ground, and that particular problem has disappeared. Now on my way home. I got another couple of hours home, only about uh, 45 minutes away from uh, home itself, and the car spluttered and started missing and then just cut out completely. It had zero power, pulled over the side of the road, and um, yeah, thankfully, Greg, one of my mates, stopped with me, uh, helped me try and jumpstart Harry. It got power back again and then drove the rest of the way home. And I had a feeling, it might have been because of that cable, it wasn't charging the battery enough from the alternator, but um, the fact is the battery still had enough charge to, to get me home without any dramas, you know, just after a quick jump start. So that couldn't have been the case. Having a look now, I'll show you, I can see what potentially part of the issue was. So this old terminal has been on here forever. You can see I've uh, jumped a couple of things onto here. I've got the, uh, the trickle charger and that's the power for the air conditioning. But uh, this got really heated up when that cable at the back shorted out. Obviously the power all the way through got very hot and soft. You can see it sort of melting some of the plastic and stuff there. And um, you can actually see that the terminal is quite loose. And uh, yeah, that was obviously not getting a good enough connection with shorting out. And I believe that is another part of my problem. So um, I think it's well and truly time to replace that uh, terminal there. So let's uh, do everything at once. Let's get this all sorted out so that I shouldn't have any more problems uh, moving forward. I might actually have a look at the, uh, the negative as well. The negative is... Uh, yeah, it also could use a little bit of uh, tidying up. All right, bit of playing around, but I have new battery terminals. Everything's reconnected and, uh, and sitting a little bit nicer than it did before. What actually happened down here is it actually cooked uh, the terminal of the battery itself quite a bit and there was actually some sort of corrosion and stuff around the battery where it had actually eroded it obviously it got so hot um, I assume it's lead or something like that the uh, the soft metal on the top of the battery so that I have now cleaned up clamped it uh, clamped it well with new terminals that are nice and tight and snug so fingers crossed we're going to start it up now and uh, it all should run Nicely, um, but I won't know for sure until 
I give a, a bit of time and get to uh, do a few Ks in it again, but um, I am thinking that this feels like the main issues that I had are sorted. Looks good. All right, starts up fine. Everything seems to be working again. So uh, I think I dodged a bullet. It could have probably been much worse. Uh, just <laughs> make sure you're careful with power uh, on these things because uh, that could have burnt the thing down or done all sorts of nasty things. So I was very, very lucky, particularly also being in the middle of nowhere with, uh, yeah, there wouldn't have been any support coming for a long time. So she's going again uh, and gearing up for the Adelaide rally, which I'm going to be doing next month. So uh, this is going to be doing a long road trip. It's about, uh, I think it's about 1200 kilometers back to uh, Adelaide where my family is. And uh, I'm going to be doing the Adelaide rally for those of you who know what it is, which is a four day uh, driving event should be great. So um, hopefully Harry's working properly and gets me there all good. I will bring you back more when we get closer to that. But uh, do all the things, like and subscribe if you're enjoying this and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.